Welcome back to another edition of the Educational AD Podcast, brought to you by Violet Defense. Violet Defense is dedicated to protecting our world from germs by bringing the power of UV disinfection to everyday spaces. Their patented technology enables them to harness the power of the sun to incorporate ultraviolet light into products and environments like never before. Whether you're ready to implement existing products or you'd like to explore researching and developing a custom deployment of the technology for your school, Violet Defense has the solutions and experience you need. Thanks again to Violet Defense for sponsoring the Educational AD Podcast. The FIAAA also wants to thank our great diamond sponsor, Varsity Brands, including BSN, Varsity Spirit, and Herf Jones. Varsity Brands, elevating student experiences in sport, spirit, and achievement. The FIAAA also wants to thank our great platinum sponsors, including Gipper, sports graphics made incredibly simple. Ephesus Lighting, innovating a brighter future at every level. Booster Digital Displays, revolutionize your game day experience. Vital Signs, bring student achievements to life. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing and Camp Mobile, where leaders communicate better. Thanks to all of our great sponsors. Welcome back to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast brought to you by Violet Defense. We have a real treat today. Uh, two professionals from the world of sports are gonna join us and share some wisdom. Uh, we have Mark Adams and Jeff Van Fleet. Mark is a longtime college basketball coach, and since 1999, he's been one of the voices for ESPN College Basketball as an analyst. Jeff's background is in developing and deploying uh, complex software and hardware systems for businesses and the government, and together, uh, they currently run Lighthouse Technologies. They're also very successful authors uh, as they have created the book, The Coach and the Geek, Building a Kick Butt Culture, which I'm holding up right now. So on the podcast, you'll just have to trust me. Mark and Jeff, welcome to the Educational AD Podcast. Thanks, Jake. We're jacked to be with you today and talk to all of your listeners and followers as high school athletic directors. And, and the geek is jacked as well. And he doesn't usually get that jacked. Mark. Yeah, I'm, I'm pumped to be here, Jake. I really appreciate you uh, reaching out to us and, and connecting with us and, and reading the book and uh, just engaging with us. This is a, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, I, I found out about the book via uh, Twitter and uh, just said, well, this looks interesting and really was very, very impressed with it. Uh, I've been doing, this is my 41st year. I've been a teacher, a coach, an athletic director, high school and college and just one of the best uh, books, resource books for a coach or an AD that I've come across. So again, to our listeners, I really recommend it. Um, before we get into uh, the concept of the book and some of the other things that you're doing, uh, we always like to let our listeners have a chance to get to know you. So uh, Mark, we'll go ahead and start with you. Uh, go ahead and share a little bit, you know, where you grew up, where you went to college and school, and, and maybe how your love of sports, you know, led to your current position. Oh, you betcha. First of all, I, I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I went to the University of Cincinnati. I coached for 17 years, and I have a really hot wife, uh, which also brought me four wonderful kids, all sons, by the way, raised all boys. And uh, my oldest is 37, my twins are 28, and my youngest is 15. So Judy and I try to have a child about every decade if we can along the way, Jake. You know, it's just been a, a wonderful ride as a, as a father first and as a husband. And, and now to be involved in, in this project with Jeff that talks about really building a family, building a culture of we. And we'll get into those types of things uh, later on. But my passion for sports uh, run deep. 
Uh, I've been a college basketball coach uh, for, for many, many years. I was an athletic director during that time as well. And now as a private businessman and broadcaster on ESPN and with Lighthouse Technologies, it's just a thrill to be here with my good friend, Jeff Van Fleet. <laughs> well, thanks uh, again for being on. And from a kid's standpoint, wow, uh, you know, my <laughs> wife and I, we've got three kids, they're all in their 30s, but uh, we had three, I think, in the space of five years. So uh, we took the opposite <laughs> route. So uh, that, that's a different show we'll talk about. Jeff, what's your background? Uh, how'd you get involved with uh, this guy and, and Lighthouse Technologies? Well, this guy's a crazy guy and I love him. And we, we met a dozen years ago, 12, yeah, a dozen years ago or so. I grew up outside of Pittsburgh, um, still an avid Steelers fan and uh, went, to, went to college at uh, Penn State and um, and Giants still Penn State fan uh, to this day, but I, I moved uh, to Ohio uh, in probably 83, right after college, I moved to Ohio, got a job out here in technology, and um, a few years later after that, I started uh, our company, Lighthouse Technologies, and uh, Mark and I got connected, and um, it's, been, uh, it's, it's been a great, it's been a great experience. Um, just love working with Mark um, and this whole, you know, I was a high school athlete and um, we have a couple of daughters, uh, they're 28 and 25 now, and I coached them when they were young until their skills out, uh, outgrew my ability to coach. Uh, and then uh, um, my wife and I actually met playing volleyball years ago and played for, oh, geez, I don't know, 30 years, 35 years playing volleyball. And the girls kind of grew up with the volleyballs in their hands and, you know, they became good athletes uh, as a result of us dragging them around to different tournaments and stuff. So, um, you know, what, what I love is connecting the dots between real life and athletics and, and just seeing how team, how, how individuals can grow as team members and overcome adversity and learn life skills through, through high school athletics is just, it's phenomenal. And this whole project with the coach and the geek is really put the shine the, the light on that for me personally and I, that's what I'm loving about this well uh, I, again your enthusiasm is obvious and it uh, it certainly rings true to uh, uh, the lessons that you guys present in the book so let's go and jump right into it um, the concept of the book uh, the coach and the geek uh, building a kick butt culture how did that actually begin so Mark and I were traveling um, on a sales call uh, to go visit a customer a couple of years ago. And we started in this conversation. Mark was a rebuilder. And, um, and, and so he took over kind of like not great teams. I'm like, Mark, how did you get th these guys like fired up? How did you get them even have any hope that they might have a chance of winning um, a game when they had this whole history of years of losing and losing and losing and he started describing to me this system that he had learned and developed over years as a coach and uh, along that process I'm like hey you should write a book about that and like he didn't miss a beat he's like no I think we should write a book about that and that's how this whole coach and geek story began. And you know Jake part of being a coach is recognizing talent and Jeff is a supremely talented guy and he's very process driven. So while Jeff is ready, aim, fire, I'm just fire, right? So I, I, and I, and I really appreciate that chemistry that Jeff and I bring to the table. And so our writing process was very process driven, but I had a lot of, um, a lot of opportunity to express myself, uh, to be creative during the process, share some stories with Jeff, and then bring him into the story into areas that made sense for the geek. And he brought so much value in that process. The only creative tension we ever had was this one scene that Jeff rewrote for me. And it was about a coach coming in the office the morning after a game. And I had him basically drinking a Mountain Dew because that's what coaches do. They want sugar, they want caffeine. And Jeff actually rewrote that part and had the, co the coach going to get a hot mug of coffee. 
you know, and this isn't Elf, right? This isn't, you know, some guy around a campfire drinking a hot mug of coffee. This is a basketball coach that probably just lost a game the night before and needs a shot of adrenaline along with, you know, some caffeine and some sugar. And so I end up winning that argument, by the way. It didn't go to the hot mug of coffee, but Jeff and I tease each other about, about that particular part of the book all the time. But it was a joy writing the book with Jeff Van Fleet. <laughs> Uh, well, as as someone who's been in that role coming into the office after a, a, a tough yeah. loss, uh, in my younger days, it definitely was the caffeinated uh, soda. Uh, later on, it, it became coffee. I, th I think I needed that warm hug. So uh, you know, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll give each of you a win on that one. In the book, uh, there are a lot of things and we can't, you know, do Jake's, you know, top 25 highlights from your book. But uh, one of the things that stuck out for me was your discussion of uh, culture and particularly the disease of me versus the disease of we. One of my favorite catchphrases, and I've used it for years, I wish I could track down where I first heard it, but it's just one of those things that's lost. Uh, and I share this with my coaches and, and they know it by heart. Uh, I say everything that you see at a school, um, on, as a team, anything you see, it's either coached or it's allowed. Which one is it for you? And, you know, your disease of me, disease, culture of we uh, stuck out. So uh, how do you avoid that uh, disease of me uh, and get to a culture of we? You know, Jake, I'm, I'm a history buff. And one of the speeches that resonates with me in political history more than any other speech is Abraham Lincoln and the Gettysburg Address in 1863. Now, he could have wrote those 10 sentences and he could have blamed the South for all of the, all of the nation's problems, but he didn't. Instead, he penned 10 sentences. And in those 10 sentences, he used the word we 10 times more than any other word, and never said the word I or they. It was all about we. He was creating a vision, a selfless vision for the country. And that always resonated with me. And throughout the book, we explore the disease of me versus the culture of we. And when we look at the landscape today of our young high school students and their parents, how often are they suffering from the disease of me and then how can we as leaders in athletics bring about a culture of we? It's the difference between being selfish and selfless. And so many times parents get caught up in living their children's lives and through them and that they get caught up with points and rebounds and batting average and things like that. When really it's about how can we build successful, sustainable young people? How can we build in the behaviors, the selfless behaviors, which we're gonna talk about today with our focus app, and how can we drive that level of communication and accountability that truly becomes Lincoln's culture of we versus the disease of me that we often see in athletics and in society today. You know, kids are impressionable. And when they see a coach who is selfless and provides a culture of we, they will gravitate toward it versus being selfish. I believe that, Jake, but it takes leadership. It also takes some strategies and tactics, which we're going to get into today. And some of those strategies and tactics, we actually incorporate in our own company. And Jeff, you've been a part of this culture of we for a long time. How have you enacted that at Lighthouse Technologies to help athletic directors maybe begin the first step of enacting that in their athletic programs? Yes, it's a great question because I believe, and, and my experience is, this is all about being intentional. And Jake, you kind of hit the nail on the head with the way you described that as you opened. It's, it's, it, things happen and either you allow it to happen or you're intentional about making it happen, right? And um, I think building culture, it either you're either intentional or you get what you get. And, um, and I've, I've, we've coached, technology companies, large businesses, small business, and, and now athletic programs around how to be intentional with your culture. And, and you're not perfect about it all the time, right? Like I mess up all the time about this. And then Mark will hold me accountable. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. So what part of what we 
developed in the book as we were writing the book. And then what we've now implemented in the company is our own personal accountability about how we hold what we want for ourselves individually. And we build our own personal, if you will, hustle stats. And, uh, and, and so mine, for example, are in the area of um, professional growth. They include spirituality. They include um, my physicalness, like working out and feeling good physically. And then they include a heavy dose of my relationships with my wife and children and mom and brothers, like my family, right? And Mark taught me this. And Mark, I don't even know if we've even, I've even said this to you, but you taught me this like a dozen years ago when you started describing to me how you built your own personal mission statement and how you hold yourself accountable. And we didn't, back then, we didn't even talk about having a system. Well, now we do. And I, effectively, I track stats every week. Do I tell my wife I love her every day? Check the box. Yes. Do I call my girls who live on the other side of the country at least once a week and have a conversation with them, make sure I tell them I love them? Do I call my mom once a week? So I have this list of things that I developed for myself with Mark's coaching to help me feel fulfilled in life. And I track it. And then I meet with Mark once a week and he meets with me with his personal ones. And we don't judge each other about what you chose to put on your list. What we do is encourage each other that if that's important to you, I'm going to talk to you about it. We're going to bring it up. And how's that going with your sons, Mark? And, and how are things with your mom and the things that are important to you? And it's same with me. So, so we meet weekly and among all of our employees and we share our own personal hustle stats. And that lets all of us know we care about each other. You know, the, the hustle stats component that you mentioned in the book uh, really spoke to me because as a coach, I mostly football and track, but from a football standpoint, I was always trying to find ways to, you know, track and chart that component, the effort component, because there's only so many uh, people are going to carry the ball, touch the ball, you know, make the tackle. So I was a, I was a beast for giving out assists on a tackles. So, uh, one of my defensive coaches used to tease me. He said, you know, if the kid's in the frame of the picture, you give him an assist, but uh, it wasn't that bad, but yeah, those hustle stats I think are so important. Um, you guys have a website coach and the geek or coach and geek.com. And uh, you talk a lot about the research that you did uh for building team cultures. Um, you know, how'd you go about doing that? And did you learn anything from ADs or coaches while you were doing that research? I, I tell you what, uh, my daughter, Rachel, our, young, our youngest daughter um, runs marketing for us in the company. And Rachel, we wrote the book and we, you know, it's a fictional book, right? And we made up a bunch of stuff, but it's based on a lot of truth in our, in our lives. And, but still, you, you know, you, you're building a fictional book to make your points. And, um, and Rachel's like, okay, so you guys wrote the book, which I love the book, but let's go find out what real coaches face before we think about whether we think we can help them or not. And so we set out on this mission to go interview and have real conversations with coaches across the country. And initially we interviewed, I think, nine or 10 D1 championship coaches, either they'd won the conference, been to the final four or won a national championship. And so big names that have success in their background. And we asked them a bunch of open-ended questions. And we concluded as we gathered and wrote a ton of notes about this, they were all about building successful, sustainable programs. Not one of them said, I'm trying to win tomorrow. I'm trying to make sure I win this season, okay? And so they were about building a bigger culture and they talked about that and they began to explain to us what they meant by the words culture. And so we took a bunch of notes and that just sort of rolled us down this path of how could we help them in that, in that area. And that idea that you talked about, Jake, about the hustle stats for your, for your football team uh, came out in the book and then it turned out that was something that was that was critical to these coaches is understanding the behavior of the players that wasn't traditional stats. 
And Mark, you're better at this than I am. Talk, talk, explain this a bit better for me. Well, as far as what I learned, Jeff, along the way, you already hit on the success, successful, sustainable programs that the coaches really focused on. But I think my message to athletic directors and coaches who are listening to our podcast today, we went deeper. We went and also surveyed student athletes, hundreds of them, by the way, where we evaluated and asked them specific questions about their experience as student athletes at the high school and the collegiate level. And we asked in the survey, how often does your head coach meet with you one-on-one -on -one for 15 minutes or more? When I think of athletic directors who their job is to coach the coaches, I would ask every athletic director to listen to this next number. 52% of our respondents of high school and collegiate student athletes responded 52% that they never meet with their head coach for 15 minutes or more to discuss anything outside of their field or their court of competition. 41% said rarely, basically once a month to once a year. 93% of student athletes, high school and college, said they never or rarely meet with their head coach one-on-one -on -one for 15 minutes or more to talk about life. Now, I'm old school. I'm a former college athletic director, former college basketball coach. I now coach fifth grade basketball and 16U baseball. And guess what I do after listening to that or after understanding that our research sent us down that path of 52 and 41%. I spend time with my dudes. And it is the best time I could ever spend. And so many of the calls we've had with high school coaches, they've said, you know what? I've lost my way. I've forgotten that I'm here to invest time and invest my talents, invest my wisdom and experience into my student athletes. And so they said, but I don't have time. I, maybe I'm not a teacher at the school and I'm running back and forth. And my response has been, do you drive a bus to your game? What about getting one player to sit next to you on the bus versus sitting there acting like a head coach. Why don't you be a human being first and invest in your team members? And that has resonated across the high school and collegiate athletic landscape. So that's what I learned, Jake, from our research. And it will stay with me for the rest of my coaching career until they bury me. And I hope to be coaching grade school kids and high school kids for the rest of my life. You know, it's so, so true. And it's one of those lessons that unfortunately, you know, most coaches, and I certainly put myself in that category, learn too late. Uh, you know, the, the old cliche, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Uh, I think certainly borne out by that statistic. Yep. For our listeners, we are visiting with Mark Adams and Jeff Van Fleet, uh, authors of The Coach and the Geek, Building a Kick-Butt Culture. We're going to take a quick break and hear from our podcast sponsor, Violet Defense. Violet Defense is dedicated to protecting our world from germs by bringing the power of UV disinfection to everyday spaces. Their patented technology enables them to harness the power of the sun to incorporate ultraviolet light into products and environments like never before. Whether you're ready to implement existing products or you'd like to explore researching and developing a custom deployment of the technology for your school, Violet Defense has the solutions and experience you need. Thanks again to Violet Defense for sponsoring the Educational AD Podcast. Welcome back. Once again, we're visiting with Mark Adams and Jeff Van Fleet, the authors of The Coach and the Geek, Building a Kick Butt culture. Guys, I saw that um, you've developed a new app, which you're calling Focus, and uh, it's kind of based on your book and the research that you just got done talking about. What does this app do, and uh, how can uh, a coach use it in building their culture? Jake, Focus is changing back to the way that coaches should coach with a new twist on it, with a technology that'll add to the overall culture culture of we through communication, accountability, measuring. It's, it's a wonderful tool. And I got to give a lot of credit to Jeff Van Fleet, my co-author, as he's really been the brains behind the development of the Focus app. And what it's designed to do is to define successful behaviors, things that 
you can do, anybody can do as a competitive athlete. An example would be of concentration and effort, block off for a rebound, make physical contact. It doesn't take any talent to do that. It just takes concentration and effort. Or as a baseball player, sprint through first base, regardless of circumstance. It doesn't take any talent to do that. It just takes concentration and effort. And the geek, Jeff Van Fleet, and myself, we came up with the concept, can you measure hustle? There are so many analytics out there today, but we were fascinated to get down to the very base of human behavior, concentration and effort. Could a coach identify and define specific hustle stats around concentration and effort that really encompasses their team DNA and then define it, measure it, track it over time and use it as a communication tool to allow your athletes to compete at the highest level and to be as competitive as they can be. And so those hustle stats were the brainchild of the coach and the geek. And then we decided to build technology where a coach could actually measure attitude, if you will, measure hustle through the level of concentration and effort. And it has been a value add tool for coaches and ADs because an AD's job is to coach the coaches. And what we found is, is that athletic directors now, this resonates with them. The Focus app brings something new to the table at a very affordable cost, by the way, for high school programs that you can implement and change your disease of me to a culture of we around those selfless type of statistics, those hustle stats. But Jeff, you were really the, brand, you were really the genius behind the, the app itself. How does it work? Genius, a little strong, but I appreciate the, <laughs> appreciate the, the words of encouragement, Mark. You know, what, what resonated with me a lot in that research we did is the coaches said, we get these players and they're, they always seem to be on this roller coaster. And what they turn out they meant is we're tracking these traditional stats and I can't get consistency from my players. And so with, with Mark, and his guidance, we developed these hustle stats. And we, for ourselves, we, we picked different sports and we made up what we thought the hustle stats were for those sports. And then um, the app lets the coach um, identify what are the basic foundational, you know, like the blocking and tackling things that you need to do, the footwork that you need to do that results in goodness afterwards. And some of the examples that Mark gave are great, but I tell you some of the other examples that coaches are telling us they love is encouragement. It's high fives. It's, it's good attitude. You come off the plate after striking out, are you high fiving your teammates or you, your head slumped down? You're a pitcher and you just struck a guy out. You're pretty happy. You're a pitcher and you just walk three guys in a row. Are you slumped down or are you looking forward? And so the app just makes it nice and simple players kind of list down the left, your hustle stats kind of across the top, and there's a little plus button, a little graphic, and a little minus button. You either accomplished that hustle activity, you sprinted the first base, or you didn't sprint. You had an opportunity to sprint first base, obviously, and you didn't do it. And so, and it turns everything into percentages. And at the team level, you can see the overall team, how the team's performing. We graph it over time, and that's, i tell you what, the graphing has just been so yeah. just shocking of how well the, everybody's um, uh, responding to how well these graphs are going. Because you can see the whole team's performance, and then you can see it at the individual player. So you can see if a player is learning and moving up, or if they moved up because you emphasize it in the first couple of practices, and then you forgot emphasizing it, and now everybody's tailing down, or if you get that roller coaster effect. So really nice and simple user interface that um, that Coach Adams here uh, helped help design for sure. Now, I, I can relate a hundred percent. I was always uh, big into you know posting information in the locker room and then talking about it out on the field uh, in that area. And the stuff that you guys mentioned, you know, uh, be a physical player, you know, give a hundred percent, support your teammates. You know, we talked about that. You know, don't dog them. You know, build them up. You know, you're going to need that. You know, ninth grade third string linebacker to make a game saving tackle on kickoff return one day. And he's, you're going to want him to want to sell out and, and give everything. Just great, great stuff. Wow. Um, how can 
uh, you know, coaches and, and athletic directors and even the, you know, the, the kids, how can people benefit from, you know, using this app? So the, I think there's different angles that you kind of look at it from a player's perspective. What we're noticing is when coaches post the graphs up in the dugout, for example, or in the locker room, the players, you know, they're competitive, right? They want to know, okay, what does this mean? And what do I need to do to get to the top of that leaderboard? And they're dogging each other a little bit. And, and what I, what I love about it and what I love that even on, the, you know, two years ago when Mark and I were on that drive and he was telling me about his players is that on a pick a basketball team, your eighth and ninth and 10th guys or ladies on that team who don't get much playing time, but when they do get playing time, they hustle their butts off they could be leading the leaderboard. In fact, that could encourage coaches to say, I want to give Sally more playing time because Absolutely. when she's in the game, she's kicking butt, right? And it's putting pressure on the starters saying, hey, I need you to up your game. And uh, for, from so from the player's perspective, I think they get fired up. And, and from a coach's perspective, in fact, uh, Trace Bevel, uh, Jordan High School out in Utah, in fact, the Jordan High School beat diggers, which I got to give props to, uh, to the beat diggers out there in Jordan. Trace's quote to us was, it's one thing to tell your team to play hard, but it's another thing to define playing hard, measure it, and hold the team accountable every day for those hustle behaviors. And it, that's we've heard now past Trace, probably another athletic director and a collegiate coach who have said quotes like, it is helping us define and hold ourselves as coaches accountable to teaching these kids the behaviors that we thought we were teaching them. And um, it, I, I love the fact that it's actually, I, I mean, so I've been in technology for 40 years almost, and, and we help businesses all kinds of ways, but it doesn't personally touch their lives like Focus is doing with the coach and the geek here. This is impacting players and they're coming off the, if you think about that, the whole thing, you strike out, you come off and your coach is giving you props for having your head up, is just teaching them the principles that life's gonna give you some curveballs and it's gonna knock you down. And your job is to look forward and come at it again. And we just see that from the coaches and the players. I, I love that. And Jake, it allows coaches to really be intentional. That, that's the real key to focus from a X's and O's standpoint is that you can identify behaviors that you need to work on on a day-to-day -day basis. A really good example of that is, is that we've done a bunch of beta set, uh, site testing with the app throughout this past college basketball season. In Miami of Ohio, one of the assistant coaches there is a really good friend of mine. And he asked me to evaluate their team on physical block offs and stepping to the offensive glass. And so I did a three game set for them where I evaluated their team. In the very first game, there was a young man that went for 17 points and four rebounds, really athletic, really good player, but he only blocked off 35% of the time. I could give them that specific stat. And he only went to the offensive glass 40% of the time. So the coach calls me up the next day, asked me how things went. I came back and said, how do you think so-and-so did? He goes, wow, I did great. He had 17 points, four rebounds. We don't win without him. My response was, as a coach, that kid's just good enough to get you beat. He goes, really? Why? I said, yeah, I went for 17 points, four rebounds, but he only blocked off 35% of the time. He doesn't play hard. He's just good enough to get you beat. But here's the good news, coach. If he just checks his man, even 50, 60, 70% of the time, and then takes one step to the offensive glass, he's a double-double guy. Otherwise, he's a dog. He's just good enough to get you beat. Now, those weren't necessarily kind words, but they were the truth. So what, is the, what did that coach do? Division one program in the Mid-American Conference brings the young man in and tells him, quote, what exactly what I told him. He shows him video to prove the point and then shows the focus app. It was like the dude was looking at Fortnite. It was on the device. He could see exactly where he was in the team, where he ranked. Two nights later, after they go out with an intentional practice of this young man to get better in those two areas, Jake, in the first minute, it looked like this player had gone into a phone booth and came out as freaking Superman. I mean, he was so active, so engaged, hustling all over the place. He went for 20 points and 11 rebounds, and Miami went on a five-game winning streak 
during that stretch as well. You can be intentional as a coach and you can give players the hard facts and then allow them to change their behavior in a positive setting. I find that fascinating. And any tool that can help a coach do that, I think is a tool that builds a culture of we. You know, I, I think that's just a great, great example of one of those things that um, it, it doesn't cost anything. You know, that player, you know, he didn't have to go in the weight room anymore. He didn't have to, you know, shoot another thousand shots. It was simply his effort and understanding how that effort could pay off better. I remember yeah. during the, um, uh, the March Madness games, uh, you know, you guys were posting some analysis of games. Uh, I don't know if you're using the focus app, but you're certainly yeah. using those principles. And, you know, boy, um, uh, somebody in Vegas could have used that information because you guys were spot on with your analysis of teams and how they were performing, or in many cases, were not performing yeah. uh, great stuff. Okay. Guys, I wish we could uh, do this for another half hour. I'm a, I'm a coach and a, a geek uh, myself, uh, not technology wise, but a geek for sports. Uh, but I do want to give you an opportunity to weigh in on one of our podcast staples, uh, something we call the athletic director's toolbox. Uh, Mark, we're going to start with you. Um, we're going to ask you to come up with three tools that you think uh, a new or an old athletic director can really benefit from. Uh, what three tools are going to go in Mark Adams' athletic director toolbox? My three tools are really very simple. Number one, investment of time in one-on-one -on -one time with your coaches and student athletes. You can't spend your time any better with all the things you do. I understand you are overwhelmed, all the facilities, all the scheduling, all the academic performance reviews, everything else that goes along with being an athletic director. I understand you're overwhelmed, but if you can wedge in some one-on-one -on -one time with your coaches and one-on-one -on -one time with some select student athletes, that would be value add. Number two, when you have those meetings, you have two ears and one mouth, use them accordingly. And number three, establish your own personal mission. My mission is that I experience joy by creating value for those that I love and care about. So number one, one-on-one -on -one time. Number two, two ears and one mouth. And number three, create your own mission. Easy. Great, great stuff. Uh, I know you won't be surprised at all when I tell you that uh, those three tools uh, are mentioned very frequently, um, particularly the one about listening. Jeff, what three tools are going to go into your athletic director toolbox? Jake, I agree with Mark on my number one, that one-on-one -on -one time. In fact, you say it on your victory site, right? You talk about you know, the truth is we're not trying to turn high school kids into winning athletic scholarships. That's not the goal. We're trying to make them better people, better teammates, better communicators, better people, right? And that one-on-one -on -one time is the time to do that. And um, I, I, nothing resonates with me more than that. I would say number two for me is be very clear on your culture. Be intentional about your culture what's important, and then follow through and execute on that that is important. So if you say um, raising you and helping raise you as a human being is your number one, then if somebody is acting out, maybe they lose their starting spot and they go in two minutes late into a game. Be intentional about that. And number three, and Mark, you won't be surprised by this, number three is assess your organization. So as an AD, be intentional and be open and ask your coaches what's going well, what's not going well, and what you personally as the AD can do to support them. And then I would go the step further and require my coaches to do an assessment of their players and their parents before and after the season. And, and you have to be open to the ideas that are there and we all know how difficult some of that might be. But if you never ask the question, that means I'm not sure you got a culture of we. You have a culture of a controlled interface. And I think asking the question opens it up. And as long as you're clear, I'm not necessarily implementing everything that I hear, but I do want to hear. 
then I think you create that culture of we. Great, great stuff. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Um, Mark, if, uh, and Jeff will ask you the same question. If one of our listeners you know, wants to reach out to you, maybe pick your brain a little bit, what's the best way that they can get in touch with you? You know, they can email me at mark at coachandgeek.com, mark at coachandgeek.com. And I'll even give you my personal cell phone number. It's 937-626-9959. Would love to hear from any athletic director, coach across the country. If you have any questions, be more than happy to help you out. And oh, by the way, the Focus app is on sale now for $500 or less. You actually get to name your pricing at $500 or less for use of the Focus app in your program. So we'd be glad to entertain that thought as well. Jeff, uh, how can our listeners get in touch with you? The, the same way. Contact Mark? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> my email is jeff at coachandgeek.com. And my personal cell is 937-272-4259. Again, love to hear. I'd love to help any coach, any AD, or any listener really help them think through problems and provide our experience um, in, in helping them out however we can. And uh, to our listeners, I strongly encourage you to, um, at the very least, uh, check out their book, The Coach and the Geek, Building a Kick Butt, butt Culture. Uh, whether you're a coach or a business person, it's going to help you tremendously. And uh, go to their website, coachinggeek.com. Uh, try to uh, save that cell phone unless you're going to buy the program, which I encourage you to do as well. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being on the program. Our pleasure, Jake. Thanks for having us. Absolutely, Jake. Yeah, thanks for having us. This, this, it's been great. It's been great. Thank you. Uh, it's been great for us too. To our listeners, remember, the Zoom recordings of these interviews are being uploaded to the FIAAA Educational AD Podcast YouTube channel. Thanks for listening. Come back again next time for another episode of the Educational AD Podcast.